Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, thank you for watching my channel again. I'm back after a while. Uh, I had a long break studying for CCIE exam. And I have started a challenge for myself to uh, record videos every day for each CCIE lab exam uh, item for, for uh, according to that exam blueprint. Now, today we are going to talk about we are going to have the very fun lab and talk about layer two van circuit technologies. Specifically, I'm going to talk about um, this item here. I'm going to talk about PPOE. We are going to have a fun lab for PPOE. And on top of PPOE on the main, we are going to have OSPF running. Uh, this is very, very similar what you will receive as a question as a task in ccie exam lab exam actually because that's one of the prerequisites that when you are trying to establish your uh, configure your whole environment on the configuration section you will be asked to configure different uh, underlay technologies one of them is definitely layer 2 technology and ppoe so you have to have your ppoe up and running and then on top of that, other services like uh, OSPF and uh, other routing protocols. So uh, in this lab, um, I'm going to show you first, um, just a second, I'm going to change the window here. Um, this is going to be our diagram today. Our lab is going to run on GNS3. What we see here is a pretty simple lab. We will have two routers interconnected via switch one. This is just GNS3 generic switch, nothing fancy here. On left side, we have router one, which will act as a PPoE server. On uh, right side, we have router two uh, as PPoE client. And we will configure PPoE over this Ethernet connectivity. It's actually point to point protocol over Ethernet and then also we will add the uh, PAP authentication for that that client 2 route client router 2 will perf will uh, present its credential to server and server will authenticate router 2 uh, before establishing the, uh, the, the uh, van connectivity and then we will have these loopbacks on each router that we will advertise over OSPF to each other. And we will see that OSPF over PPOE is uh, working just fine. And you can, uh, you can have your own IGP route uh, injection to the both sides of the van connectivity. Also, um, I will try to do some packet capture on what happens exactly behind the scene on the packet level, what is going on on the wire to see whole paddle, pad, uh, paddle, paddy, and and the whole packet flow uh, for setting up the PPoE. We will discuss uh, discuss that a little bit as well. So let's just jump into the configuration. Um, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just switch the recording window to my secure CRT here. So as you can see, uh, um, I'm connected to the console of the both routers. So let's just do some basic configuration on router one and router two. Let me just close this one here first. Okay. So let's just change the, for the sake of simplicity, let's change the host name on router one to uh, I would call it PPOE server and also let's make it more comfortable for us that we don't get bothered every time that we go to from global uh, global configuration mode to to uh, privilege mode we don't get um, we don't get bothered by the syslog console syslog messages so uh, we will put here logging synchronous and i think we are done for here should i interface brief let's do a quick checkup yes 
My router two the same. I'm gonna change the host name to PPOE dash client align console zero login synchronous okay so we will start the actual configuration by ppoe client uh the first thing we will do on the ppoe client we will cre create a logical interface a logical dia dialer interface so interface global mode global configuration mode interface dialer one so what happens here is that on the client side we have to have an interface dialer that acts as a dialer to dial into the server for uh, for ppoe connection and all of our logical configuration will be on the dialer side on, on this dialer interface and then when the dialer interface is configured properly then we will tie it to a um, uh, PPOE pool and that PPOE pool will be called from our physical interface. That's how it works on the client side of the PPOE. Now, uh, interface dialer one, we will say encapsulation PPP um, uh, IP address negotiated. So there are a couple of options here we can have hard-coded IP address, we can have DHCP here for the sake of this lab, I will just put negotiated on the other side, the server side, we will define a local pool, uh, which a local IP address pool, uh, which will use to uh, uh, provide IP address to the client side during the negotiation phase of PPP. So encapsulation PPP, IP address negotiated, so let's say uh, PAP, Authentication, I'm sorry, PAP, uh, PPP, PAP, sent username, you put user one, so password, I'm going to just explain this. So by this command, we are telling, we are educating this client router that when you are, when you are asked to be authenticated, when you are asked to uh, present your credential by PAP protocol to the server, uh, present your credential, your username will be user1 and password will be Cisco1. So you will see on the server side, this exact credential has to match on the global or on the running configuration that um, server side can, uh, it's going to be on the running configuration database that server side can just uh, compare it against that database and if it matches, then the authentication will be successful. So let's see what we have so far. Show run interface dialer one. So IP address negotiated encapsulation PVP. We have, and now one more important thing is that we have to adjust the MTU here uh, to 1492 because there are eight bytes overhead for PPOE. That if we don't do that, because on the server side, it's going to be. Um, included, it's going to be uh, adjusted automatically on the virtual template side. But on the client side, if you don't do that, the, your PPOE will be fine. The whole uh, connection will be established. You can ping the other side. But the problem is that when you have, for example, uh, OSPF running, your OSPF a neighbor relationship is not going to come up. So your OSPF has, is going to have problem. Specifically, it's going to start, uh, get a stuck on the exit start mode. Now, to avoid that, we just adjust the client side as well. So let's see what we have here. We configure the IP address, IPMTU, encapsulation, PPP. Now, we are going to tie to a pool. So I would say PPOE, uh, I'm sorry, the other pool. We call it, uh, um, we can assign any um, any number between one on uh, from one to 255 I would just put 10 and you will see when where I will call this that's very important so this is just locally significant to this route uh, so I think we are done with the dialer side uh, now let's go let, let's go to the physical interface which is on my gigabit zero zero so interface gigabit zero zero 
no IP address. So I don't want any IP address to be assigned to the uh, interface on the physical level. And then, uh, and then I would say PPOE client dial pool number. Now I have to call the dial the pool the dial pool that I assigned here. So it's going to be ten and no shutdown. So on the client side, we are ready. Um, but uh, on, the, on the server side, I'm going to show you the configuration on the next video.